so guys, don't get me wrong. I'm not against ice baths, cold showers, extreme sports. I'm just against blind spiritual leaders leading blind spiritual people into dealings with the demonic whilst claiming that they're healing them. Hey guys, well thanks for watching. I'm Nick Franks. This is Firebrand Notes and this is a vlog not just for Christians, for believers, for spiritual people. This is for you if you would say you're not a spiritual person or if you have questions, doubts, cynicisms, that kind of thing. This is about one of the most disturbing things I've seen on TV in recent times. Freeze the Fear by Wim Hof. I love jumping off bridges into water for fun. I love cold showers. We do it regularly. We go to a sauna. We have ice baths. There's nothing wrong with it. It's good for your CV system. But spiritually, one of the most naive things I've seen on popularized main time, mainstream TV in recent times, Freeze of Fear with Wim Hof. Is this really the real deal? Is it legit? I don't think so. Stay with me for the next few minutes and I'll try and show you how. All right, well, let's take a quick look at the clip that I'm talking about from the episode last Thursday, episode two, where what you're about to see is Wim Hof practicing his breathing system with a bunch of people who I think generally would say are atheists, don't have any belief in God, uh, wouldn't testify to saving faith in Jesus. And what you're about to see hopefully will shock you as much as it shocked me. Let's be. All good. Squeeze it to your heart, and three, and two, and one, and let it go. Round number two, we go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Boulie, let it go. Anybody can do this. Boulie, let it go. Tingling, lightheadedness, whatever you feel is different. Breathe into it. Charge up your body. What's Owen doing? Something's definitely happening there for him, isn't it? Do you think he's gone into a trance-like state? I think possibly. He's got yeah. something going on, hasn't he? Totally. So let's talk about some things. What's going on in the body? Physiologically, emotionally and spiritually. Spiritually, we want to leave to the end but physiologically again there's nothing wrong with ice baths we know that from science from research from sports science we know that it having cold showers for example improves sleep it improves uh, things called vasodilation it improves circulation it improves a sense of uh, well-being so there's you know and other things beside we know that for example uh, when it comes to the alkalinity of the blood if you go onto Wim's website he's quite right about all of this you know, the blood is changed by having cold showers from acidic levels to a more alkaline level that can have benefits. Um, but aside from that, the main thing that he's going after is this thing called hypoxia. Now, hypoxia is where you have a lower or a lowered saturation of oxygen within the blood. You know, those little things that you might see on ambulance programs where people have a thing put on their finger? It's called an oximeter. And what that's telling you is the percentage of oxygen saturated in the blood. Normally, it's about 99%. Sometimes if you're unwell, it will drop to maybe 95 or whatever, or even lower. Um, when you're seeing Wim in this breathing technique, it's, it's, it's inducing a hyperventilating, which results in a form of hypoxia, a, a reduced level of oxygen in the blood, which is why there are physiological responses such as tingling. You see the uh, the sense of people getting hot, that kind of thing. Um, read about it on Wim's website, it's there. No one's denying the physiological here. The question is what then happens? So emotionally, you see people breaking down. What's going on? And it's deliberate, they say that. This is what we're trying to do, guys. We're trying to get into this deep place. I'll talk about that in a minute. So there's the physiological, emotional, and then we get to the spiritual. And I want to just say simply, what's going on here? God only knows what's going on here. Right now. Oh, weird. <sighs> okay. 
I know. <laughs> I can see it. Do you feel it? I know. <laughs> she loves it so much. She loves it so much. Oh my god. <laughs> Secularization, the secular world that we live in that denies the notion of God, that laughs at creation, thinks that evolution is normative, is a very dark reality. And this piece that we're seeing is reflecting that. And just to say this very quickly, I think this is a sign prophetically of what's coming in popular Western culture. And perhaps the UK will lead in this where a form of spirituality is going to become increasingly vogue, increasingly in. And the link between that and the despising of disciples who say, no, that's fake, that's counterfeit, it's demonic spirituality. The only way to know the Father is Jesus. So you'll have a rise in the swelling of popularized forms of fake spirituality at the same time as an increase in despising of true disciples of Jesus. We are here. We are getting to the core. Three. Julie. Letting go. Last one. Here he comes. Julie. Letting go. And stuff. All good. All good. All good. All good. A comment really for Christians more than non-Christians. I want to avoid the temptation to go off on this too much, but you'll probably recognize some similarities between some of the, the physiological, even emotional responses you're seeing in the clip I've just shown you with hyper-charismatic Christian churches where I believe the gifts of the Spirit aren't taught properly and where an unhealthy balance is put on experience. Very similar. Look into the Kundalini Spirit. I encourage you to do that. I'm not going to go off on that. Maybe that's a separate vlog. The Kundalini Spirit. Dodgy. Yes, okay. And it's inside of us. And we can get there. Whenever we want, we are able to go to the depth and retrieve what is hidden, to bring it to the surface. Anxiety, deep emotions, trauma. Let's look at some Paul quotes because these are, these are quite telling. First of all, from the celebrities, and I'll talk a little bit about some Paul quotes from Wim's website. First of all, these are things that are said by Wim to the celebrities and then some celebrities in response. One way or another, we'll get there. Wim talks in kind of monosyllabic, brusque way. And, you know, it's quite entertaining. It's very lovable in some ways. But one way or another, we'll get there, guys. Get where, Wim? One way or the other, we'll get there. Where is the destination? And there's something of prophetic irony and truth in this. Of course, if we're talking about approaching the spiritual or the eternal, all of us will get there one way or the other. We need to be clear about what we're hearing here, what's being said, what's being communicated. Do they, does he even understand what he's saying? We're all here to look after each other. Really? Well, uh, are all sheep in a flock looking after all the other sheep? No. Can sheep look after other sheep? No. What do sheep need? Sheep need a shepherd. Sheep need a pastor. Sheep need a guide. I've never experienced anything like this before, said one of the celebrities, and I'll bet you haven't, if you're living in an atheist, secularized world that denies the spiritual, and then you're being led by a fake blind guide into a spiritual experience, of course you're having new experiences. Thank you, Wim. Appreciation, gratitude for blindness, appreciation and gratitude for being led to the cliff edge. This is from the celebrities who think they're experiencing legitimate spiritual wholeness, healing, that kind of thing. And then finally, you don't have to understand what's happening. You just have to feel it. Well, that's the mantra of a generation if ever I heard one. Don't worry about understanding. Just leave your brain 
back with your clothes in the locker and just go based purely on feeling. It's, it's a, it, it really is a narrative of a generation. Finally, there's one more, and I won't use the expletive. This is no BS. This is the real thing, says Wim Hof. Again, there's no doubt this is real. The issue isn't whether to do the, whether this is BS or real or not, or authentic or not. It's to do with what is the source. This is the spiritual blindness. This is the death and death of spiritual authority that Wim Hof, Russell Brand don't have to guide people into truth. The issue is not whether something is real. It's to do with what the source is. Let me give you some quotes from, from Wim's website. Over time, this is to do with the essential worldview that is completely wrong, and this is what the devil is banking on. If you're not a Christian, this is what the devil wants you to believe. Over time, as we as humans have developed a different attitude towards nature, and we've forgotten about our inner power. Wim Hof, Russell Brand, et al. want you to believe that by looking within deeply within yourself, you will find, find salvation. You will find, find healing and wholeness, restoration from trauma, eternal salvation. It's a polar opposite message to the gospel, which says repent now, rely on Jesus, life, death, resurrection, his blood, because he loves you, looking outward to a saviour, a Lord who we want to submit to. Na naturally, we don't, want, we don't want to do that. We don't want to rely on a saviour. We want to be the saviour. So Wim Hof, in our inner power, that's going to heal you. That's going to save you, isn't it? No, this is blind spiritual leading. Practicing, just finally, practicing the specific breathing exercises of the Wim Hof method will release your inner fire. Again, prophetic, ironic truth. This is the worldview difference. And I want to finish with this in just a minute from 1 Corinthians 15. If you've not heard of that, it's a book of the Bible. It's right at the end of the, well, near the end of the Bible, where Paul, the apostle Paul, you'll have heard of St. Paul, talks about the resurrection from the dead. This is Paul talking about Jesus' resurrection, the resurrection of those who are in Christ or who believe in him or who rely on him for salvation, not for us, not from ourselves. The Bible says, and there is no, there is salvation in no one else, no one else. This is the absolute language of the Bible that explains why Jesus was crucified on a Roman cross. Have you ever thought that? Have you ever wondered why was Jesus crucified? Have you ever looked into it? Do you know how utterly reliable that is as, as historical fact? There's no doubting Jesus' life. There's no doubting Jesus' death. You have to be an irrational person denying historical truth. Have you ever wondered why did Jesus get crucified like that? It's because he used language like this. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is in the book of Acts. This is Luke, the, the doctor, the physician, one of, Luke, one of Paul's traveling companions, writing, recording what Paul had said. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Do you see how vastly, how darkly deceptive this is? When wants you, Russell Brand wants you to look within yourself to find what the Bible tells us can only be found by looking out to Jesus. Again, in Acts, there's another, there's another very interesting moment here in Acts 19 where the sons of Sceva, some Jewish exorcists, were going around. They didn't know Jesus. They didn't know true spiritual authority, much like Wim Hof. They were fake spiritual guides. They were blind, leading the blind. Look what happened when they encountered the demonic. In Acts 19, 15, the demons spoke to them and said, but the evil spirit answered them, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I recognize, but who are you? Who are you, Wim Hof? Russell Brand. Nick Franks, who are you? Let me tell you, Nick Franks is nobody. Without Jesus Christ, there is no spiritual authority. Demons will not submit to anyone or anything other than the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. When you're dealing with these spiritual realms, these spiritual forces without authority, 
that makes them cower, it is an incredibly dangerous place. Let me explain this from another letter in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 2. This is another letter to a church in an ancient Greek city called Corinth. And Paul, Paul, St. Paul, writes to the Christians there saying, explaining to them, because they didn't get it. They were struggling to understand. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, the natural person, for they are folly to him and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Again, the spiritual discernment is never going to come by looking into ourselves. Spiritual discernment only comes by looking out from ourselves to a loving Savior in submission and in faith who then graciously, mercifully opens the eyes and heart, eyes of our mind to be able to comprehend and discern. This is 1 Corinthians 2, 15. The spiritual person, so we had the natural person, then the spiritual person judges all things but is himself to be judged by no one. Paul distinguishes the natural, unregenerate, unsaved person, Wim Hof, Russell Brand, the celebrities who are looking into themselves for healing and hope and salvation, with the spiritual person, the person who's come to the end of themselves, the person who recognizes the historical reliability of, of the gospel message, that's a spiritual person. Woe, but by the grace of God go I. That's what a spiritual person says. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you for suffering. Thank you for your shed blood. Thank you for your righteousness that only comes through surrender. Finally, words of Jesus, John 14, 16. Again, this is the language that gets people crucified. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Wim Hof needs to hear this. Russell Brand needs to hear this. Gabby Logan, Lee Mack, all the celebrities, everybody on the face of the planet needs to hear this. Nobody comes to the Father except through me says Jesus, except through Christ. The breathing was really powerful for me and I was starting to get very vivid images and feeling physical sensations that were quite profound. And then I had this unbelievable sensation of, of kind of overwhelming love that was coming from Tamsin's mum. Just saying it sounds, you know, ridiculous. And, you know, I don't know Tamsin's mum. I didn't know Tamsin a few days before this, I was, I was just absolutely moved. I had to go and tell Tamsin that her energy was in the room and it was overwhelming. No bullshit, the real thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wim. I was touched very much by watching Gabby Logan. I think, I presume an atheist, not a Christian at least, go into a breathing session with Wim Hof, barely knowing somebody, half an hour, whatever, later, through this demonic exposure. And it is, it is spiritual, it is demonic. Anything that's not in Christ is, is demonic, is anti-Christ. Weeping, sobbing deeply, communicating on behalf of her friend's dead mother. What is going on here? After that, understandably, what, what needs to happen? Well, anybody that's had an experience like that demonic or otherwise. This is, this is the naivety of approaching the spiritual in this way. What's needed? Well, pastoring's needed. Shepherding is needed. Leading. Spiritual oversight and wisdom and discernment. And to see Gabby very, very obviously affected, as were all of them. But perhaps Gabby more than any other perhaps because I like football and watch sport and appreciate the way she, she leads in that way and presents in that way, to see her naturally looking around for pastoral help and to then go into a one-on-one -on -one with Wim. My heart broke. Your heart should break if you know Jesus as the only way, the only truth and the only life. This is profound spiritual deception. Gabby needs Jesus. The only way her heart will be healed, the only way she'll know the Father, she doesn't even know that she needs the Father, is through Jesus. Spiritual leadership that recognizes that. 
that points people to Jesus, not to ourselves. It points people to the Bible, not to the ways and wisdoms of the world. Even my slightly cynical mind knows that this is going to do them the world of good. Yeah. They're going to feel great today. Definitely. Yeah, when right. you see them yeah. having an, uh, an experience yeah. like this. Do you, like, when I see them lying on the floor and bawling their eyes out, yeah. do I want to have a go? Not have a go, but like, you must go, you, you, like, something is happening. Definitely something is happening. And sometimes you don't need to, like, understand what's happening. Mm. You just got to feel it. Yeah. And I think that when I see things like this, I'm like, I'd rather have an experience that I can feel than one I can understand. Because that's more important. Wow. Blind guides, charlatans, masquerading as pastors, spiritual guides, when they are themselves blind. How many people tune into Russell Brand's podcasts or vlogs or whatever to receive? And I want to make this point, two, two things to finish. First is to say to you, if you're not a Christian, if you're not a disciple of Jesus, please consider the historical truth. This is what we go into. And if you've not read this, please contact me. We'll send it to you for free. We'll send you a Bible if you haven't got one. Consider the historical claims of Jesus. There's no doubt that Jesus was on the planet, that he lived, that he died. There's no doubt that he was crucified. The issue is, was he raised from the dead? What's the significance of the blood of Jesus? Um, please consider that. I appeal to you. I appeal to you. If you are a Christian, make note of these demonic things that are being now broadcast by the BBC, primetime, popular TV, as a marker in the sand for what lies ahead, a rising, a swelling of fake demonic spiritual spirituality that will be hand in hand with the despising of the church, the true church, the true disciple, the true lover and follower of Jesus. Who are you to say that this isn't right for me? Look at you, you're supposed to be a Christian, all loving and accepting of everything. No, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to the Father. And whether, it, whether they know it or not, Gabby is longing for the Father. She's longing for her heavenly Father, as are all of the celebrities in this piece, including Lee Mack. And so it's vital that those who have true spiritual authority, that passage in one Corinthians 2, that we speak up, we communicate clearly. And if you're not a Christian, I hope this helps you. If you are a Christian, please send this out to your non-Christian networks who are being pastored by blind guides. Thank you for, for tracking with me. I want to just show you something from the Bible. Um, this is the letter that I was telling you about earlier to the Corinthians in the New Testament of the Bible. This is chapter 15. I want to just show you something here that I think highlights the polar opposite wisdom of the world, of the demonic, with saving faith, the only way that will bring you peace and salvation. Um, this is the, do you remember I mentioned about the resurrection passage? Well, this is it, the resurrection of Christ. I'm going to just scroll down to verse 44 because it would be good for you to read it in your own time to get the context. And it's a very, very dense, beautiful passage. Um, we do a teaching session on this. In fact, we're in a long teaching session on this whole book, if you're interested. But this Sunday, so today, actually, as I'm speaking to you, this passage is the, is the subject. So if you're interested, you can go and listen to that. But look, look at this verse here. So, the sec so verse 44, if I can just highlight that for you. Okay, look at the second half of verse 44. If there is a natural body, again, physiological, all the stuff to do with cold showers and ice baths and ice treatment, which is legit and completely safe and brilliant and enjoyable and fun. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Then Paul goes on to talking about Adam versus Jesus, the Garden of Eden versus well, everybody should know what happened. I'm not going to go into it for time. Let me just read it and see if this makes sense to you. So if there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Okay, so there's a physical body and then there's something else going on that we can't touch or, or apprehend properly. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being 
or the Greek word there is soul, meaning soul, which is what we're talking about and thinking about in the context of Freeze the Fear with Wim Hof. People's souls, people's eternal souls. The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural and then the spiritual. The first man, that's Adam. We're all in Adam naturally at birth. You might have heard of something called original sin or total depravity. You know, we're all inherently sinful, regardless of how well we think we may live. You might look at some person and think, well, he's an evil person. I'm not like that. That's the wrong measure. It's the wrong measure. There isn't a human standard that can reconcile us with God. Only Jesus' blood and perfection can do that. So that's what we mean here when we say we're, we're all in Adam. It's, it's not relative. The last Adam, that's talking about Jesus, became a life-giving spirit. That's in verse uh, 45. Just jumping down to verse 47. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. We're all born of the dust. We're all born in Adam. We're all found in Adam. Check out Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe. Sons of Adam, daughters of Eve. C.S. Lewis understood this well. If there's one thing that Jesus cannot be, it's moderately important. If there's one thing that the gospel cannot be, is moderately important. This is either infinitely important for everybody on the planet or it's of no value. So we're all found in Adam. But then it says in verse 48, as was the man of dust, so are also those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, Wim Hof, Russell Brand, all of us, until we come to faith in Jesus, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. That is the only way by which we'll be saved. That's the only way we'll be whole, healed, at peace, eternally secure, is when we bear the image of the man of heaven. And that's my prayer for Gabby Logan, for Wim Hof, for Russell Brand, for Lee Mack, for Holly, whatever her name is, is that people come to an understanding of how obvious is the spiritual realm, how obvious is the creator God. And yet we want to pull all of it into our own humanistic narratives that just make it all about me, myself and I. It's hopeless, it's futile, it will end in hell. The only way we can be saved is by Jesus. The only way to be reconciled to the Father is by Jesus.